Okay, uh, good morning all of you. So, uh, today we will take this topic of uh, reading and what I will do uh, quickly is to review uh, certain uh, lectures that we have given very quickly and then we will uh, quickly take up some uh, assignment and tutorial activities. Okay. So, uh, we discussed about three pass reading as a way to read uh, technical papers, scientific literature. So, the idea of three pass is not all the papers that you might come across are important and you need to prioritize the papers that you want to read and to what extent you want to read. So, with that we saw that there are three passes, there is first pass, it is mainly an observation pass, it is about 10 to 15 minutes. In the second pass, when you think that the paper might be relevant to your work, then you go and spend a little more uh, called as a judgment phase or second pass, you judge whether it is good or bad. So, if it is, uh, it may be relevant, the topic might be relevant looking at the title and abstract, but it may not be good. So, it may not be serious kind of work. So, that is a second pass. And the third pass is really something which you definitely requ require for your work and you need to spend a lot more time on it, which is the third pass in an understanding phase. So, in the first pass what we generally do is to just read the uh, title, abstract and introduction, just a very minimal of that, browse through the section heading, skip remaining and then radically read the conclusion. So, just by doing this you can get an overall idea and then what was suggested is we make a first pass note and uh, the notes in first pass essentially contains uh, bibliographic details, type of article, nature, DOI number and so on. So, what we did was we use this, okay. we use this and gave you an assignment where you had to pick up papers from different disciplines and then go through it and take down a first pass note. So, what I will do now, I have reset all the, the hand raise here and I am going to ask you a few questions and discuss with you what is the importance of uh, these uh, details here. So, I am going to ask you uh, questions and uh, I would like a few of you to answer. Uh, first question is in bibliographic details, when you read a paper, what are the details that you would like to note down? In bibliographic details, what do we mean by bibliographic details and what details you need to write down? So, I am going to reset again and once you are ready, you can raise your hands. Okay, so, we have KLE Institute. Hello, KLE Institute. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, tell me Sir, please. Sir, bibliography details means publication, publication details, author yes. detail, month, yeah, yeah. year. So, uh, tool, uh, where give specifically, do not tell, uh, tell what are the specific items will you write down? Author name. Yes, title author. of the paper. Only author name. How many authors? Type of name? paper. All the authors' name. Suppose or there are some, 50 authors. Some authors name. Suppose there are fifty no, authors. No, no, sir. Some authors. Name. First author name. First author. First, first few author. First few authors name. Okay. Why do you think first few authors name is important? Contribution will be there in descending order, sir. Uh, so, uh, what is your name, madam? Uh, Jai Lakshmi ma. Okay, so Jai Lakshmi. Suppose Jai I read Lakshmi. some Jai Lakshmi in a paper, how would I know anything about Jai Lakshmi? Why should I write Jai Lakshmi's name uh, if it's the first name in the uh, paper? Depending on how much contribution they have done for writing the paper no, no. or in the publication, depending on that, the author. But name how do you know when you read a paper? How do you know how much? What is Jai Lakshmi's contribution to that paper? I mean not you, I mean somebody else reads your paper and how will they be able to judge whether Jay Lakshmi has contributed more. Okay, go ahead. I was just First author will be the main author of the article. Okay, so that is your argument, very okay, good. Okay, then. Okay, what else will you yes, take down? Title of the paper. Okay. Title of the paper, page number. 
yes publication details yes uh, type of type of paper volume number doi url so okay. on okay now uh, i'm going to uh, ask so uh, mrs jayalakshmi has pointed out uh, several items uh, what i would like all of you to do i'm just closing this interaction now what i'd like all of you to do is write down in a piece of paper okay i'm going to reset the questions again so what i'd like you to do is to write down in a piece of paper what are the minimum details that you require from bibliographic information minimum what is the minimum detail that is required to be noted down so i'm going to reset it now and i'll i'll give you about couple of minutes time so mrs jalakshmi has pointed out several things uh, either from that list or what you think is the minimum information that is required from bibliographic information so please write it down in a piece of paper okay i hope you have got some minimum details now i i don't want you to raise your hands now i want you to discuss with your neighbor and see if you have missed anything that your neighbor has captured and if your neighbor has missed anything that is important and you i want you to discuss among yourselves and find out why you should include and why you should not include i want you to discuss Yes, I can see you all discussing. So now I'm going to reset hand raise, and I would like you to uh, come up and uh, tell me what you think is the minimum information. This is Amruta School. Yes, good morning. Tell us, please. Good morning, sir. sir first of all i would like to note down the journal name volume page number year of publication and uh, the author the author what is the author which author author authors authors all the authors author of the publication so you think yes. this is the minimum information why do you think this is the minimum information sir uh, with this i will be able to uh, Uh, make a note of uh, from where i have collected this uh, article and no my uh, question is minimum information also. is this the minimum information that is required why do we write down uh, the bibliographic details what is the purpose of bibliographic details so to get uh, uh, to uh, to give credit to to the person who has uh, uh, contributed to the publication so you could just say uh, what is your name satyanarayan satyanarayan so you could just say satyanarayan from amruta school now why do you want to give other details because uh, it will be help me uh, it will help us to trace out uh, from which uh, year of publication and uh, what is uh, which journal what type of uh, article is this so all these details uh, i can collect okay so i will i will go to another college and let's hear from others as well dronacharya college for finding any article we require doi number that is doi link digital object identifier yes because this is the minimal requirement for finding any article online okay so according to you the minimum information is doi very good let's hear from somebody yes, else sir. as well next is uh, me society ha uh, yes sir uh, according to me author name and title is very important while searching any paper along with keywords no no my question is uh, we are not uh, looking at searching now we have got a paper in front of us we have we are reading the paper and we are noting down important things in which my question what what was the minimum bibliographic information that you need to store so i will go to the next uh institute which is ldrp institute of technology good morning sir good morning uh, i am jr mehta i am jr mehta uh, uh, yes, according Mr. to mehta. me the minimum details for bibliographic information are main author 
title of the paper journal name and year okay fair enough let me just go to the next college uh, bharati vidyapeet from reading point of view what you have suggested was the first you need to know the type of article and nature of work with digital object identifier that is doi and the bibliographic information what you have what you have taught us how to write it was first the title the author the journal the volume the page number year and doi you have got a lot of information the question was what is the minimum information that is required why am i asking for the minimum information so let us nature hear of work. yeah and doi yeah you have given a, uh, all nature the information but my DOI. question is what is minimal let's let's hear from one more uh, institute and we'll see if uh, otherwise i will uh, discuss again this is somaya college i feel only title only the title that's minimum information okay all right so what i was expecting was little different why do we need a bibliographic information a bibliographic information is basically for retrieval of that article correct i need to be able to get to that article sometime in the future or somebody else that i am passing that information to needs to be able to retrieve that article so if the only information that is required is what is required to retrieve the article the only information that is required is the journal name the volume and page number that's all that is required the minimum information is journal name volume and page number title is extra author name extra okay similarly doi number is also a unique number and it is minimal if you have doi number you don't need anything else but doi number is mainly for computers it's not for humans and the problem with doi number is unless you do an electronic cut and paste if you're going to look at an article and write it down on a piece of paper or write it down uh, on a word document or some other spreadsheet you are going to make a mistake you are likely to make a mistake so doi number is unique minimal one of you said that it is the minimum information that is required but it's little risky in the sense that you could make a mistake of writing down a few digits so if you get one digit wrong you it's gone you will never be able to retrieve that particular article on the other hand if you just write journal name volume and page number you can definitely hit that article either hard copy or the electronic version so that is the minimum in information that is required because these three are the uh, for nearly 90% of the journals it is unique so for, if you give a volume number and a page there it is always unique there won't be more than one article in that journal with the same volume number and page okay so that is the minimum information that is required so whenever you write down bibliographic details keep in mind that these three things are definitely written down apart from that you could write down other information which will help you later to take a judgment whether it is good or bad okay all those things come later of course the title the name of the authors are all important but that is for a second level of information you should be able to distinguish why you are taking a particular information and why you are not taking a particular information now let's come to a list of authors list of authors can be 1 2 to about 10 easily 5 6 authors what is the point in writing down all the author's name even if you say you write the first author's name what is it what information i'm going to reset uh, this question and i'm going to ask you what information you gain by writing down the author's name okay 
So, Siliguri is there. So, Siliguri, tell us what do you think? What information that you gain by writing the author's name? Sir, uh, by writing the author's name, we are able to get the information about uh, the particular article who has written and uh, uh, from the different authors we can get referencing of other articles also uh, those authors have written. All right. According to me. Okay. Thank you. Let's hear from somebody else. This is uh, the next one is Sushila Dev Bansal College. My question was. Hello. What is the importance of writing down the author names and what uh, information does that give you? So, if we write the author's name, it will give us the uh, related uh, papers on that topic by the same author. Okay. And? Yes, huh? topic and the research area, the related research, the other topics, uh, the other papers written on the t same topic will be able to know that will help us. Okay. So, let us go to Francis Institute of Technology. What do I have to say? Francis Institute. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, author's name uh, specifically it means, uh, I, mean, I believe we would come to know uh, if a certain expert has written the paper, definitely that uh, information will be much reliable. Uh, we also through the author names would come to know how much more we could learn uh, about that topic through his other papers for that matter and more detailed analysis into that topic can be done if the author is known, the researcher is known. Okay. Next is uh, Sarvajanik College of Engineering. Yeah, hello. Yeah, we is can hear audible? you. Yes. Yeah, I am Parisa Chambu and according to me if we uh, write down the name of the author then we can claim to know other articles of that author and uh, the area in which the author is working. Okay. So, I think uh, by and large uh, people are uh, have uh, pointed out a few points. One is that the uh, writing down the author will give us information about the other papers published and the area of work. Okay. So, Usually, such kind of information you will not get by looking at the first author. Okay? If you just write down the first author, mostly you will not get this information. Why do you think so? Let me ask uh, RVS College of Engineering. Sir? The kind of information that people have said that you will get from the author name, the kind, the uh, area of work and other papers published, you will usually not get if you write down the name of just the first author. Why is that so? Um, actually, by referring the name, we can acknowledge the author and uh, for a, a subject expert, we can refer the name and to avoid plagiarism, sir. No, I think you did not get my question. Let me just repeat it. My question was, some of your colleagues have said that the author name is important so that you can get papers published by that author in other areas or similar areas. Now, my claim is that if you just write the first author, it is not sufficient when it may not give you the correct information of papers published by that author in other area. Why so? Uh, by referring the bibliography of that author, we can find uh, different papers of the same area, sir. Mm, no, I think you did not get my question. Uh, let me just pass on to another college, KIT College of Engineering. When we are trying to search for a particular paper in a particular area, maybe the first author might not be always in present along with the third author or so, and the third author might be working with somebody else also on the same page. So, what do you do in that case? So, so that is why we will need the names of all the authors, not only the first author. Okay, I think I will skip that. Anyway, so let me just stop this interaction and I will uh, discuss the point I am trying to make. Now, most often 
we will see later in the afternoon session regarding authorship. Most often if you look at a paper, the first few authors are usually students who are graduate students, PhD students or postdocs. Now, that is everywhere throughout the world. Now, they may not or may work in the same area. Okay, they, they might just move from place to place, from university to university, labs to labs and so on. So, they may not actually work in the same area. So, if you just write the first few authors name, that will not give you any information which you can use. Of course, it is an referential information to say that these both did the main work in that. Okay, that is required when you write a paper. But remember now you are in a stage where you have to, you have a lot of literature to gather and you are looking at those literature and you have to decide among this 100 papers which 10 do I read first. So, to do that if you just write the first author it is not going to be helpful. Based on the first author search you may not even find another paper that might be the first paper of that author. And after say that maybe that author published this 10 years back and after that if you search in that area that person might be working in totally different area. So, what is important is to write who the communicating author is. The communicating author is usually the so called reasonably permanent author who has been working in that area for a reasonable 5, 10 years, 20 years and so on. So, the communicating author is very important at least in the kind of the first pass most when you are doing. Okay, when you are writing a full thesis you need to know the first two authors and so on, all the authors. But as a note taking, as a note taking you need to only write who the corresponding author is. The corresponding author, if you look up for the corresponding author's publications, you will get all the other relevant papers. That is what some of you have pointed out and that is correct. And by also looking at a corresponding author and where they are from, you are also going to make a judgmental call when you go to the second phase, second pass. Remember the first pass is observing, second pass is judgmental. Second pass, first pass you are just writing down whatever is there, you are not saying it is good or bad and so on. You are just taking down information, it is like doing an experiment. Something is happening, you are writing down the observations and putting it in a journal. That is observing. Now, after that comes judgment. When you want to do a judgment, you want to know whether you can rely on this particular paper, whether you can rely on this particular group, whether this group has got a good track record in uh, publishing in this area. All this will be helpful in your second pass. So, therefore, in your first pass it is important that you write down who the communicating author is. Even if you, if there are few authors and you want to write all the authors, but definitely you have to write who the communicating author is. Okay? So, although you might write all the authors, at least write down the communicating author if you do not think you need to write all the authors. And that will be helpful in your second pass. Okay? And uh, apart from that, of course, there are information such as uh, you need to take a look at whether it is a letter. Okay? Letter is a short communication, it is an original article is a, uh, that something new has been contributed or it is a review article. Now, other than that, these are all uh, the information that you can, you have already done. We will come to this uh, question and answer section a little later. Now, what I will uh, go is the second pass. So, the first pass was taking down information without passing any judgment that it was good or bad. The second pass, it is important that you write down or you make a judgmental call whether this 
group is reliable, whether this work is reliable and so on. So, what is given here is only some cues which will help you decide. You can just look at the plots, graphs, whether the graphs are having error bars. So, if somebody is making a conclusion based on a graph and which does not have an error bar, then you cannot trust that conclusion. So, error bars are important and you already studied and tomorrow again you will uh, have this session on uh, data uh, presentation, where you will again read about error bars, but error bars are important. And whether the axes are neatly labeled, the legend is there and so on. So, why is all this important? Why is it important? Uh, let me ask some of you, I am going to reset. I am going to ask you, why is it important to see such kind of things, whether the graphs are ok, whether they are neatly drawn, whether the tables are uh, reasonably presented and so on. Why are we trying to make a judgmental call? Can we have some hand raises? Anybody is ready to answer? Yes, Basilios, over to you. In a, in a graph, mainly we can uh, plot the two axes, that means we can have uh, the deviations that is possible. No, uh, if you are looking at the graph, we can easily get the information accurate. No, no, no. That Madam, is the numerical my, values such as. No, uh, can I, I am just going to repeat. I am not asking you what is the purpose of graphs. I am asking you why is it important to see if the graphs are presented neatly? Why is it important to see that the graphs are presented with error bars? Okay, axes are properly labeled. Why is it important to see it qualitatively, whether it is neatly done or is this like giving in school they give you know neatness 10 marks, handwriting 5 marks and so on. Why are we doing that kind of thing with a paper? Accuracy, we will get. Okay, let me uh, uh, go to another college. Uh, Rajaram Bapu Institute of Technology, Sangli, is it? Uh, so, visualization is more than the word processing. If graphs are visualized properly, then we will remember it very faster than the word processing. Uh, no, I think uh, my question is not clear to many of you. My question is not what is the purpose of graphs. Okay, my question is why look at how graphs are presented neatly? Will you give 10 marks for uh, neat presentation? You normally do not do that, no? Why do you want to, why am I saying you look at the graphs whether they are presented neatly or not? Uh, sir, in, in the uh, uh, documented then the uh, the reader will be able to correlate the section that is the result and analysis with the graph. If the graphs are not properly documented, it will be difficult for a reader to mm -hmm. correlate the content, the text part. Okay. Uh, let me give not. another college, a CU Shah College of Engineering. Yes, the graphs are the better way to represent one's work. And if the graphs are neatly presented, then we can also rely on the research done by that person. That's why graphs are important, whether they are neatly created or not. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let me go to uh, Gharda Institute of Technology. Hi. Your question is why do we uh, or why should we represent uh, graphs, charts in a paper correctly? And the answer is if we uh, do not represent graphs and charts correctly or uh, if we uh, make some uh, mistakes in uh, pre presenting, then there are the chances that we may misguide the readers. So, being the writer, being the author, it is our responsibility to pass the correct messages or correct uh, or uh, accurate data to the readers and that is the reason we should uh, represent graphs and charts correctly. Uh, yeah, my question was not really uh, our role as an author now, my question was, I have not yet started doing my research, I am just reading literature. And when I am reading literature, I am seeing a lot of, I have hundreds of articles to read. And in this hundred of articles, I need to filter out and find out 
which are the important work that I have limited time. I can only read 10 papers. Say in a two weeks or so, I can only finish 10 papers. So, given my constraint, what is the method to reduce this 100 to 10 as a reader, not as an author? What you say as an author is correct, but my question as a reader, how do I reduce this 100 to 10? How do I sort out the good from the bad? And one of the things, I, I will stop this interaction and I will go back to my slides. Why is it important to know that figures have been correctly drawn? Why is it important to know that the axes have been correctly marked, that there is error bars? Is the problem stated clearly? Problem should have come very nicely in the introduction and in the abstract and so on. The answer that they found out also should have come out clearly. The methodology that they have adopted has to be explained clearly. Why is just by looking at these things you can decide whether it is written nicely or not. And these are simply judgmental. Remember the second pass is judgmental. Judgmental means you are deciding which is good, which is bad. From 100 I want to reduce to 10. How do I do it? If if the authors have not paid sufficient attention to details, it is very likely that they are not doing a serious work and I do not want to read that paper first. That is the only reason. My objective now is to reduce from 100 papers to 10 papers and in that I use these things as a clue. Okay, this is possibly, maybe I am wrong in, in making judgments. We are humans and we can make mistakes, but remember we are actually judging other humans. Okay? It is not that people who are publishing this 100 papers are all ideal and they all publish only very good work. No, they are also humans, many of them are fake. How do I sort out the good from the bad? And these are all certain things which help us decide who has done a serious work. Have they why is describing methodology important? Because we need to reproduce the work. And if they have not de described it in detail, I will know by reading, looking at it. I do not have to read the methodology and understand the methodology. Just by looking at the way they have paid attention to details, I know the care that they have taken. I know that this person has spent a lot of time trying to convey the work in a nice manner then I will develop a trust. I develop a mutual trust with the author. But if that is not there, then I may not even develop that trust and I do not, I might just put it in that 90 junk and I will keep 10 which is easy to for me to read and I will spend my time worthwhile. So, that is why it is important to know what are the things that you need to look for. Of course, as uh, somebody in Gharda pointed out, as an author we need to do all these things. Why? Because somebody else is going to judge us, somebody else is going to judge our paper. And unless we are going to pay attention to these details, our paper is likely to be junked in this 90, nobody is going to read. Right? Similarly, if you go to a conference and if you do not present these things in a sufficient, if you do not show that you have taken care, that you have taken care must be apparent. It should come out directly and then people will listen to you. Similarly, when you listen to others, you look for these clues, whether they have uh, taken uh, adequate attention to uh, present the results to you. So, these are all certain points that you could use as a cue to decide whether you will read a paper in detail or not, whether you want to go to the third pass. Okay? Now, in the second pass, essentially you are developing a confidence in the author. By looking at all this quality, qualitative things, you are developing a confidence in the author. 
and then you write down these uh, points and then if you think it has to be read in detail then you put it in that 10 that you need to read in detail and in the detail third pass you can read it okay so now what we will do this is on broad steps of gathering literature one aspect that is i have a lot of literature i have come to one paper and i'm just taking down these notes okay 